So the 12 year old sister had her first baby with her father, according to court documents. Can you delve into the psychological impact on the siblings and how they perceive this as normal? Well, the thing is, they, you know, from what I've been told, uh, is that that's all they know mm -hmm. because that's what that's how they live. That's how um, they grew up. The, her, their dad was always with his sister. They were in a relationship. But you have to remember, it's her half sibling. Uh, she was that wasn't her dad from what we know. That wasn't her dad. That was her, her mom already had those kids by the time they were married. So the, the, the other siblings, they just, it was just normal. You know, when she, the, when she had the first baby, they were little, but then as they got older, as you have to remember, there are teenagers in the house and she's having babies and they're helping deliver these babies. Wow. Which is kind of strange in itself. And I mean, what kind of, I mean, you have to think about what kind of psych psychological impact that would have on any teenager, you know, they're in the home helping their sister have a child. And, and no one's asking, hey, can we can we take it to the hospital? Can we do this? But then you also have to remember the dad said he was a doctor. You said he said he was a doctor? Well, this, <laughs> this, what, this is what he told them. That's what he told the kids. He told them he, they told him he was a doctor. So there's no need for a hospital if you got a doctor in the house, right? So whenever they had medical needs and stuff like that, like he's the quote unquote doctor. Yes, he was the doctor. Can you provide some details about the conditions inside the yellow house as mentioned in court documents, like including the poor hygiene, the way it smelled, like the foul odor, and the lack of dental care? Well, see, the problem is I've never been to the house. Well, I've, I've been in now and everything was over, mm -hmm. but I went in and walked out. I didn't, I didn't stay inside. So I've only seen his house on Google when I tried to figure out where he lived. And, I, and when I saw it, I was like, God, that's a nice house. He really did. And then I saw a video in his phone one time of him walking out of the house. So I knew he lived in a brick house. Um, I knew where it was. But as far as ever going there, no. I only seen them at work. Um, and that's it. We've never actually hung. Well, he's been, he's been at my house a few times because he's done work inside of my house inside of my house mm -hmm. but there was no going and hanging out with them after work or no, none of that it was in our family that's when we met two of the little kids when they were younger probably nine or ten but we only met two of them so as far as I knew he only had two kids at home I didn't know about the, all the other siblings until um the day that the police came, I found out that there were five of them, five additional, well, five small kids total, mm -hmm. and then four adult children. Okay. And now, you have to remember, there's two moms. There's the mom of the adults, and there's a mom of the uh, younger kids, which is the stepdaughter. That's his stepdaughter. And it's the mom's real daughter. Right. Complicated. <laughs> it's complicated. It's complicated and crazy. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So the father was hired by you in 2017 as a contractor. So how did his presence in her life, how did his presence evolve from a professional relationship to the discovery of what you know now? Like, how did that evolve from working to where we are now? Well, uh, he worked for me. And so, you know, after some time, you know, I started thinking about, okay, there's something going on in this house. So, and if you ever met, I mean, you, you actually met two daughters. So the personalities, they're sweet. They're, 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 they're sweet individuals. They were nice, very polite. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we played a lot. And inside of the plate in the building while we were building. So I got pretty close to his kids. And, and, you know, one of the daughters kept talking about how she wanted to get out, how she wanted to get out and spread her wings. And I'm thinking, I, you know, I don't understand what get out means. You know, I asked her a few times, are you locked in the house? Can you, can you just walk out? 
She's like, yeah, but my dad is overprotective and, you know, he won't let me go anywhere. So that was kind of strange. And she was at the time, maybe 16. But then, at, you know, they left for a period of time, almost two years. They left. They were still in Oklahoma. I kept in contact with them, but he didn't work for me because I was asking too many questions about his um, his wife, uh, the kids, uh, the, the school. And so I guess he got tired of it and he left. But then um, he when he finally came back, his daughters were older. And now they're older and I'm thinking, okay, you're still in the same position. You still can't go out. You still can't do anything. You're in your 20s. Mm -hmm. And so um, at this time, now I'm, now I'm thinking, okay, something's really wrong. Why can't you go out? And so I started talking to one of the daughters trying to help her to leave and she wouldn't leave. You know, she didn't say she was locked in. She didn't, you know, I asked her a few times, can you just walk out the door? Yeah, but I've never done it. So she was nervous. She was scared to leave. So I couldn't even get them out of the house, get them away from her, well, away from it. But we, we, we talked so much. I was, I was close to him. I was, you know, fed him all the time, gave one of them a cell phone. Uh, but there was nothing else that I can do because I didn't have anything. I, I knew something because I did at one point in time, bring him to my, into my office and talk to him about the younger kids and ask them if those were his kids. He didn't deny it. He didn't say yes. He just stared at me. You know, I kind of told him how I felt. And, you know, I didn't talk too much because I didn't want the guy to run. So I kind of left it at, you know, I'm on a need to know basis. He was comfortable enough thinking that I wouldn't tell anybody. And uh, I, I let him think that, you know, I wouldn't tell anybody, but I did tell him that, you know, if that's if those if those kids are yours and that's your wife's daughter, that it was sick. And I don't understand, but it's not my business. And so we kind of went went on and but that's when he left. He left after we had that conversation because I think he was a little uneasy about me calling him out. 